Today we're going to look at the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality and we're going to look at various applications of it including to a problem on the International Math Olympiad. So the Cauchy-Schwarz inequality says that if you have real numbers ui's and vi's that the sum of the products ui vi all squared is less than or equal to the sum of the ui's all squared times the sum of the vi's all squared. Now to see why this is the case and when equality holds we'll construct vectors a vector u whose components are the ui's and a vector v whose components are the vi's and we're going to look at how this inequality actually relates to these two vectors so we'll draw these two vectors on the left right hand side so we have the vector u and the vector v with the same um, tail right over there as we see over there now the quantity on the left hand side is the square of the dot product of u and v now there's a relationship between the dot product of u and v and the length of the vectors u and v. That relationship is that u dot v is the length of u, that's the double bars, that stands for length, times the length of v, times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So this is going to help us in establishing the actual cauchy schwarz inequality and in seeing when equality holds. So on the right hand side, the sum of the squares of the ui's is the square of the length of the vector u and the sum of the squares of the vi's is the square of the length of v. So if we square both sides in our equality here, we have that u dot v squared is the length of u squared times the length of v squared times the cosine of theta squared. Okay, and this has all the parts of the inequality that we have. And we know cosine theta squared in general is going to be less than or equal to 1. So this quantity here is bounded above by the square of the length of u times the square of the length of v. The left-hand side here is precisely the left-hand side of Cauchy-Schwarz. And the right-hand side is the right-hand side of Cauchy-Schwarz. So a, a great reason why this inequality holds. Uh, now, why does equality, or when does equality hold? Um, so if we look at the actual inequality, equality is going to hold when cosine theta is positive or negative 1, that should say. Now that means that the angle theta is uh, either 0 or 180 degrees. So u and v are parallel vectors. Right? So in other words, the ui's are all the same scalar multiple of the vi's or vice versa. So let's look at an application. Let's maximize x plus 2y plus 3z given that x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 1. Now, this is a great problem. We're maximizing a linear function subject to being on the surface of a sphere. So if we look at the thing we're trying to maximize, we can represent it as the dot product of two things, the vector 1, 2, 3, and the vector x, y, z. Okay, that's perfect because then we're set up for using a, a Cauchy-Schwarz inequality type thing. If we let u be the vector 1, 2, 3, and v be the vectors x, y, z, then, using Cauchy-Schwarz, we'll be able to get an upper bound in terms of the lengths of u and v. So, the, the Cauchy-Schwarz says that the dot product of u and v squared is less than or equal to the square of the length of u times the square of the length of v. Okay, um, and we can fill some of this in. So, u dot v by construction is the square of the thing we're trying to maximize. is x, x plus 2y plus 3z all squared. And we're saying here that it's less than or equal to the square of the length of u, which is 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, all times the square of the length of the vector v, which is x squared plus y squared plus z squared, <clears throat> plus z squared. Okay, um, so this is great because we have 14 as one quantity, and then x squared plus y squared plus z squared is 1 in our situation. So x plus 2y plus 3z is less than or equal to the square root of 14. And we actually know this square root of 14 can be achieved. Um, equality is achieved when the vectors u and v themselves are parallel. Okay, so that means the vector x, y, z is parallel to the vector 1, 2, 3. So if you look at the components of x, y, z, we can relate them all to x. y is going to be 2x, z is going to be 3x. Okay, and then we can actually figure out what that vector has to be um, because of the fact that the sum of the squares are constrained to be 1. Um, so we get x squared plus the quantity 2x squared plus the quantity 3x squared is all 1. 
Okay, and then that tells us then that 1 is 14 times x squared, which means that x is either positive or negative 1 divided by the square root of 14. Great, so then the vector itself, the vector x, y, z, we're going to know all the components of for when equality holds. Um, so we get 1 over root 14, 2 over root 14, 3 over root 14, or the same vector with negatives in all of the components. So this is where our maximum in our problem is actually achieved. Cool, so a great application of Cauchy-Schwartz. Now let's go ahead and use the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality to solve a problem from the 1995 International Math Olympiad. Uh, so this problem says you have three real numbers a, b, c, and they're all positive, and their product is 1, and it asks to prove that the quantity 1 divided by a cubed plus b, c, plus the same thing done cyclically over the, all the variables is greater than or equal to 3 halves. So it doesn't look like at face value that we can actually use the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality here. So what we're going to do is use this problem as a way to suggest a method to use the Cauchy-Schwartz inequality when it seems like it might not be useful. So we're going to underline the denominators here and think of them as pieces of vectors like we did in the previous problem. And then use that together with Cauchy-Schwartz to get something involving um, an inequality like the type that we want. Now the question is how do we do this? We have a lot of choices. Um, so what we're going to do in this particular case is think about those denominators as being parts of vectors and then create another vector. That vector is going to have as its components a times b plus c, b times c plus a, c times a plus b. And we're going to make these squares. So we have u1 squared, u2 squared, u3 squared, and then v1 squared, v2 squared, v3 squared right over here. Okay, the advantage of doing this is now the whole point of Cauchy-Schwartz is it relates uh, the components of these uh, vectors that we're dealing with and takes the dot product of them and that involves multiplying the corresponding matching coordinates. And in this case, introducing the factor, the uis that we have, we get that the product of u1 and v1 is 1 over a, the product of u2 and v2 is 1 over b, and the product of u3 and v3 is 1 over c. So they're constructed to do this interesting product that makes things simpler. And then because a, b, c is 1, we get that 1 over a is b, c, 1 over b is a, c, and 1 over c is b, a. All right, um, so this quantity then is going to be greater than or equal to, uh, by Cauchy-Schwartz, BC plus AC plus BC, all, or that should say BA, all squared. Okay, so altogether then, uh, when we have this product, we notice that this thing actually is related to the sum of the squares of the components of the UIs. If you look at the sum of the components, squares of the components of the UIs, it's actually a constant factor times the quantity BC plus AC plus BA. Again, that B second BC should be a BA there. And that's going to help us because then we can divide out and then see a relationship for uh, a lower bound for the quantity that we're dealing with. So this thing is 2 times AB plus BC plus AC. So this quantity that we started off with We'll have a lower bound now by dividing by this quantity we just underlined right over here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. It's one copy of the thing that we're squaring, so we'll be left with the thing that we were squaring to begin with, all divided by 2 as a lower bound for the, it, the actual expression that we were dealing with in our problem. So this is going to be greater than or equal to AB plus AC plus BC all over 2. Okay, and then now we can actually find a lower bound for the numerator using the arithmetic geometric mean inequality, which says that the sum of these values is going to be at least three times the cube root of their product. And luckily for us, the product is a squared plus a squared times b squared times c squared, which is the quantity abc all squared. And we were given that abc itself is 1. 
Um, so this thing is going to equal three halves, and that gives us exactly our lower bound that we wanted. So a cool application of Cauchy-Schwarz and an intuitive understanding of how we can use it by relating it to dot products of vectors and their lengths. Once we set up a problem in that way, we're ready to go to be able to get interesting inequalities like this one.